What's up guys, I'm Dunmir, a top 100 Overwatch player, and I'm going to tell you guys how to play Echo in this guide. First thing I'm going to cover is what changed between the Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 versions of Echo, and then I'm going to go through a general rundown of how to play the character, and then I'm going to follow that up with specifics and examples of how this all looks with an analysis of a professional Overwatch League player's gameplay, which is Sam from The Shock. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is, like I said, what changed. The first thing that changed with her abilities was her focusing beam damage at its maximum damage output when an enemy is below 50% HP is now 175 damage per second as opposed to what it was before which is 200 damage per second. So it's not a very crazy nerf to be completely honest. Um, the damage is still extremely high so you don't need to worry about that being like a reason not to play her anymore. So yeah like I said don't worry about that right. Um, the other thing they also changed though was they made her maximum HP she can have when she copies something be 300. So when she copies a tank, it'll only have a maximum 300 HP, which makes her a lot worse at copying tanks. It doesn't change anything with her copying other characters or characters with you know lower HP like that than a, a DPS or a support, for example. But it's still a substantial nerf with copying tanks. Um, but still, regardless of this, tanks are a great option, as we'll talk about later. So let's just wait for that part. But um, going on from this, how does this actually affect like her general gameplay style? None of these changes really do affect her too much, but what does affect her a lot is the fact that she no longer has a second tank to worry about on the enemy team and a second tank to support her on her team. So because there's not a second tank and also because tanks give reduced ult charge, you can't farm your ultimate as much off of them. So you do have to be hitting other enemies a lot more often and you can't just be expecting to just like spam onto a choke or spam tanks in the face and get a lot of ultimate um, out of it. So, you know, you don't have that anymore. But what it also means is that you don't have the same sort of pressure against you when you're playing against an only one tank. Whereas before you would have like a D.Va or a Sigma to block your sticky grenades and stop you from being able to assassinate targets. They don't have that anymore. So you're a lot more effective as a dive assassin essentially. But what that also means though is because you don't have one on your team, you are a lot uh, more vulnerable to enemy hit scans. So whereas before, if there was like an Ash on a high ground that would basically just eat you alive, the D.Va on your team would be free to go and protect you and jump on top of her. But now that you might not have a D.Va because you only have one tank or your D.Va might have to do other things than just peel you, um, you don't have this much protection anymore. So it changes that a lot. Going on from this about um, how to play her. Basically, the first thing you're gonna wanna do and like you'll see a lot in this gameplay here is you really, really, really want to be trying to poke from range. So when we see the gameplay here, our Echo will always be poking damage from range because it allows her to just one deal damage, right? Obviously, but primarily it's to farm up her ultimate. Because the ultimate is so powerful, you want to get as much of it as possible. So you always want to be spamming into chokes, um, into areas where you think the enemy is, and just trying to knock them down to low health. Your main playstyle with Echo is looking to assassinate targets, right? So really what you're looking to do is you're looking to follow up onto a target who's half HP or less and finish them off with your beam, as you're seeing right there. Um, because we were able to dive up and assassinate a support target, now our team is going to be in a much better position overall. That is an unlucky Lucio player. But um, moving on from this, the way that you set these things up primarily, the way that you get the enemy low and follow up on that is mainly to do with hitting your sticky bombs. If you hit three stickies, you'll be able to essentially secure a kill. Three stickies and a primary fire, and it's like guaranteed, essentially, if following that up with a focus beam. Sticky grenades deal 30 damage, five with the impact and 25 with the explosion damage. Like I said, you hit three of your six or like three of the six or so, and then hit a primary fire, and there'll be a free focusing beam kill if they are any of the characters that aren't, you know, one of the tanks. So that's basically what you're looking to do. Um, but whether you get them with the sticky grenades or whether you just knock them down with primary fire or whether somebody else on your team knocks them low, you're always looking to dive onto them afterwards with your flight ability and then finish them off with a focusing beam. So you want to be trying to hold those cooldowns for that or at least like have it when you're expecting to use them um, or just in general be in the right, be on like at the right distance from them to get that effectively. So, um, while I said you can also kill, while I said you're mainly focusing on damage characters and supports, you can also focus tanks with this. 
but obviously you're gonna have to do a lot more damage to them and hit them with a lot more sticky grenades to knock them down to half health in the first place. But if they do feed into you and they're low, feel free to burn them down with the focusing beam because it does 175 damage per second and with their big hitbox you're probably going to be hitting them like for the majority of that meaning you can do the full two seconds duration which is about 350 damage so that should kill any of them essentially or knock them really 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 low so um to get this all done you're going to be wanting to play from off angles essentially um not super aggressive ones but just flying like slightly above your team, on the, slightly on the side of your team, and just looking to toss grenades into enemies as they push their choke points, as they um, aggress onto you, or are just in, in general grouped up, and then you push into them, dive onto them, and finish them with a focusing beam. And that's how you get a lot of value out of it. Targeting enemies that are unsuspecting are also really valuable too. Like for example, Widowmaker's not looking at you, you go ahead and toss your stickies at her, fly into her, you're basically going to secure that kill with a focusing beam, like all the time. Um, so that's how you generally play the character. For her ultimate, you have to kind of think a little bit more about what you want to do, just because it is so, so, so valuable. It's such a powerful ultimate. You copy something, you get um, full HP, you get all their cooldowns, and you recharge their, you, you charge their ultimate 6.5 times faster, which is really, really, really powerful. So as you can see in this clip here, um, as you pushed in, copy to Zarya, only got 300 HP out of it, but charge the ultimate really, really fast. And you do want to use it like this, where you're popping it in a situation in which the enemy is um, like already in the fight, so they can't just run away from you, and you push in them and frag out. So make sure you're using it on targets that have a powerful ultimate or powerful abilities, because you do want to really focus on trying to get this to the maximum um, sort of potential and having that be based on the high amount of cooldowns or high ultimates is 100% the strategy. It enables you to immediately get in, guaranteed value, and just frag out. You don't really want to be copying something like Cassidy or Soldier 76 where it's just like a DPS trade um, because their ultimates aren't very strong and they don't have good cooldowns. But something like Zarya that lets you drop in and have two bubbles to use on enemies, on teammates, and to charge up your Graviton Surge is really valuable. The characters like Sombra, Zarya, Sigma, Ash are all great for that. Alright guys, now it's time to run through some actual gameplay from the professional Overwatch League player Sam from the San Francisco Shock. And so we're playing of course Echo on King's Road Defense. So as you can see here starting off, like I said, spamming down those choke points, trying to get some little bit of extra damage, right? Of course the Reaper kind of dives in and feeds and um, gets punished by the team, but that's you know sort of to be expected. While you don't always want to be flying up in the air like you see Sam here, when you're playing as enemies that aren't going to be able to like punish you for it too much, and as long as you're using cover effectively, it's a good strategy. But you do have to be careful because sometimes things that are hit scan or, you know, have the capability to become hit scan and beam you down with the right click like Sojourn, um, they'll be very powerful against you and you'll get rolled by them. So be careful flying too high in the air against things like Widowmaker, Ash, or um, Sojourn. So you do have to be careful about that because they will punish you even if you're playing at the highest level. So again, um, you really aren't looking to like super commit onto something or dive something until it's low, right? You're gonna see a lot of poking, a lot of playing above and to slightly off from his team until there's an opportunity that arrives. And then that's what he's watching for. He's looking to hit some nice little stickies on somebody, get them low and then dive onto them and finish them with the beam. That's basically how you play the character. It's not like incredibly complicated, but the nuance of what you're actually going for does change things a lot. Again, sees an opportunity because the Wrecking Ball, his team's Wrecking Ball went and slammed right here, making them all focus on the Wrecking Ball, meaning he's safe to walk through and start spamming from range of things. You have a lot of ammo, so don't be afraid to spam. Um, like you have 12 shots of these little three bursts, but there you go, just like that. Thinks onto a flank, throws the stickies into the enemy team, picks a target, hits a couple of them on the Echo, hits them with a primary fire, and then gets a nice little kill off of it. Ends up going too hard on the on the dive afterwards, but still generally um, was was good with that. And as you can see, spamming always, um, anytime, especially when they don't have like a, especially when they don't have something that can kill you, like a Widowmaker, any sort of spam you can just be constantly putting at range will just get you such more 
value because in between any single fight you can get upwards of like 25% for free just from spamming at range. And considering the ultimate should be a free fight win, um, you can basically just deadlift your games like that. So we're about to see our Echo player use their ultimate. Um, they end up picking a sojourn with it, which isn't the best strategy. It does get good value out of it, but not the best target just because sojourns are to charge up her ultimate with it. Like as you're gonna see here, He's attacking, farming, trying to, you know, output damage here, but it only has 30%, 38% of its ultimate because Sojourn's strength comes in hitting the right click burst, right? So only in two seconds remaining on the ultimate is he able to farm up that, that ultimate. So like I said, he did pop off. He did end up getting two kills out of it, but um, the character itself is not the best choice. Like looking at the enemy team, copying the enemy Zarya is probably the best choice. Um, like I said, Soldier is not a good choice. Lucio is not really good either because it's hard to get that ult charge up and um, you're not really dealing a lot of damage. Essentially, you don't have these powerful cooldowns that give you good value. Whereas charging, or picking something like Zarya gives you two bubbles that you can just kind of toss onto teammates in the middle of the fight and give them a bunch of value, give you a bunch of ult charge. Um, while also having a very powerful ultimate coming up. So, and you just having like massive damage, right? And because of the fact that Echo, when she gets her ultimate done, or when she dies essentially, in her ultimate form, she regains her real life and she just comes back. It's kind of crazy, but uh, she immediately gets either full health if she has more than 100% or more than 100 HP when she used it, or um, 100 HP if she had less than that. But you have all your cooldowns so you can instantly fly away and you're just good to go again. It's really, 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 really powerful. So something you're going to see here with how our Echo player uses slide ability is if you just use it and let it go immediately, you can get a larger boost with it and you can fly faster and higher. So that's something people do a lot. Um, and you also cancel the ability earlier, meaning it starts recharging earlier. But if you're looking to maneuver yourself more particularly like you just did, then you don't cancel it as fast. But um, that's only if you need to maneuver with it and you need to use it for something particularly. Otherwise, usually you're going to try and cancel it immediately. Like as you can see there, right as he needs to chase this Soldier 76 down, he knows he'll go faster by canceling it immediately. So he boosts right here, cancels it, and then pushes forward. So, gets a kill on the Soldier 76. And that's really why you play Echo, is just because she has this insane powerful ability to just burst something down immediately if they uh, get down to low health to get down to half health it's really strong it's honestly too strong but yeah and as soon as the fight's won you can see him pushing up to spam damage especially if you're playing with a uh, mercy you just get so much value out of playing this character just spamming damage the damage of the like army fire just does a lot first but it's also just super powerful um but again you do really have to be careful with getting headshot by like a sojourn for example because even though their primary fire doesn't do a lot of damage, the right click is one shot. And uh, you do have a pretty good, you have a pretty big head box. You have to be cautious with that. Echo can be sort of like a feast or famine character in ways, just because your hit box is large. And if you do miss your cooldowns, you kind of can get burnt down pretty easily. But yeah. Here we're gonna see our Echo player about to use ult again. Not quite yet because they end up just winning this fight, and of course, he holds on to it because he's intelligent. But just this, like, this early level of spam that he's doing, while you know, I was talking mainly about it being for ult charge, what it really does is it forces the enemy to navigate the areas he's spamming into and go through there without taking too much damage. Because if they do, they're gonna die to either him or somebody else. So he's always spamming early, always pumping in damage. Again, he ended up copying the Sojourn. And like he is, of course, very good at Sojourn too, so he's gonna be securing kills off of the primary or off of the right clicks just in general. But as a like general choice for an ultimate, it's really not the strategy. Because as you can see, and especially if you know if an Overwatch League player is having a difficult time farming his ult off of it, um, you're definitely gonna have a hard time farming his ult, farming your ult. So it's definitely better not to copy Sojourn. Doomfist is a good a good copy target because you do have a good way to get enough ult charge. Um, and you also can like farm his ultimate like a couple times even so that's very powerful 
But uh, sometimes you end up dueling another Doomfist, another Owl player who ults and barely kills you. A little bit unlucky there, but um, that's, when, that's how that went. You can use your, like this, it's just crazy how much you can farm. Like right here you can see, this is what I was talking about with like farming early, just to show you guys. Right now we have 24% ult charge. Fires in those, does a little bit of damage, immediately to 45%. It's just crazy how fast you can, you can farm it. And you really, really, really want to be focusing on it. Like I don't want to go talking about it too much forever, but it's extremely, extremely powerful. And so you guys should focus on that. In the mid fight though, when these fights do break down, you're really just looking to do the same sort of thing, pick whatever the most vulnerable target is and just pump a bunch of damage into them. Um, as a side note here, something that he does that's really, really, really good is when you're aiming your stickies, you don't necessarily want, like even if, even though he's above them and obviously he's going to do this, you want to aim the stickies essentially for the enemy's feet so that um, there's a better chance of hitting them with it. But if you miss it, it's still beneath them and likely to be, they're likely to take damage from it too. So a lot of times he kind of just spams them out in a, like a little burst towards their feet. And um, the fact that they do 25 damage per explosion means that the majority of the damage does come from the explosion, so you can get enough to get these focus beam kills in. And so it's very, very valuable. But like I was saying, when the fights do go kind of crazy, you're looking to just live a lot. You don't want to be like getting too vulnerable. You don't want to be like going too far away from cover or going out in the open, just flying directly above the enemy or something like that. But um, you do want to be trying to like maintain a good distance essentially a good safe positioning while also being willing to like dive onto targets that um to get out of position he ended up pushing pretty hard here secure to kill and just went a, like i said went a little bit too difficult but went a little bit too hard there um took a limit testing thing that wasn't necessarily bad or anything sometimes you just get caught out when you're having this really high level of pressure sometimes the enemies weather the the storm essentially Echoes are very good at diving high grounds. Um, he chose not to go for it immediately, but I'm fairly certain you're going to see him go for it on the next one. Just because of the fact that you do move quickly and you can toss your ability onto the enemy. Even if he wasn't going to use his copy, it's still a good play. Because you can either force them out or secure a kill off of them on it. So um, that's something really good you should look to do. Especially in this game now where you don't have an off tank to deal with them. Like before, if you're playing Reinhardt Diva here, which is something that was very common, your Diva would fly up and take care of this. The you know, I guess you couldn't have a Sojourn, right? But go take care of the hit scan standing on the high ground. But um, now that you don't have that, you have to kind of take these things into your own hands. So if you are going to go for some of these sort of aggro plays, like you see here, like him sneaking behind and dropping behind and going for kills, just be careful not to waste your flight. As you can see there, he dropped in and then saved his flight to escape with. So that was a really smart move. Um, this is the same sort of thing that you do on like Winston where you drop on the enemies then you use your jump to get out. You want to like, you don't have to do that as much on this character as you do on Winston um, because Winston will get punished way easier. But having that flight, if you can have it, is really, 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 really good. Also, Echoes are really good against Sigma <laughs> because Sigma has a big hitbox, only 400 HP. If you hit a couple stickies onto him, um, which is pretty easy to do considering they don't have Considering they don't have, um, it's hard for him to block the stickies, then you get a lot of value out of that and you can get an easy kill on Sigma pretty frequently. So as a more mobile DPS, what you can do a lot is go for like a more aggressive angle. As you see him here going towards the right side of the statue, the left side is a more safe area um, because the enemy don't have like as much of an open angle on you essentially. There's only like one angle that can shoot you as opposed to two. But um, having this sort of angle control is really valuable because it allows you to meet the enemy on even terms instead of them just spamming into one area and just hitting a lot of you, um, not even necessarily when they mean to. That's all what these sort of long range duels are about is angle control. And so what you see is him there pressuring that. Um, and now that his Echo or now that his Soldier 76 is doing that, he doesn't need to do that anymore. But on the Echo, you do have the option to do that as long as you're not just like diving into too many enemies looking at you then you'll be okay you can you can do a lot with it so like i said here he's on the angle because when he's playing from this angle right here let me show you guys it's kind of a higher level concept so it's important but right here if he's playing with the zarya 
these guys can just kite behind the corner and the Zarya, you wouldn't be able to see them, right? But now that he's right here, the enemy, the place that was safe for the enemy to play is no longer safe. So he's spamming them from here and then his Zarya, it allows his Zarya to push up further because the enemy is going to have to go further back or beat you or die. And that gives you an equal fight. Um, whereas normally because defense gets to set up how they want to, they get to control the angles to start with. So. And that's just something that like not a lot of, not a lot of other characters have. Um, because Echo's cooldowns are on, are on a low time frame, you have the ability to just like sneak these kills very well. Like as you can see here, the fight's kind of gotten weird, like his team's kind of losing. And then he just walks in, hits cooldowns onto the Lucio, and it's just wiped out of existence. Whereas for other characters, they might have to like, you know, be consistently hitting their primary fires on that. But with Echo, you can fly in, hit those things, and then back out, and you get a lot of value out of that. Um, and that's part of the reason why Echo is so powerful. If you're looking for some more Overwatch 2 content, then make sure to check out these videos I have right here. Like I said, I'm a top 100 Overwatch player, so I have lots of videos and things to share with you guys.